the secret. My father, James Witherspoon, is a bigamist. He was already married 10 years when he first clamped eyes on my mother. In 1968, she was working at the gift wrap counter at Davis's downtown when my father asked her to wrap the carving knife he had bought his wife for their wedding anniversary. Mother says she knew that something wasn't right between a man and a woman when the gift was a blade. <laughs> I said maybe that means there was some kind of trust between them. I love my mother, but we tend to see things a little bit differently. The point is that James's marriage was never hidden from us. James is what I call him. His other daughter, Charisse, the one who grew up in the house with him, she calls him daddy even now. When most people think of bigamy, if they think of it at all, they imagine some primitive practice taking place on the pages of National Geographic. In Atlanta, we remember one sect of the Back to Africa movement that used to run bakeries in the West End. Some people said it was a cult. Others called it a cultural movement. Whatever it was, it involved four wives for each husband. The bakeries have since closed down, but sometimes we still see the women resplendent in white, trailing six humble paces behind their mutual husband. Even in Baptist churches, ushers keep smelling sauce on the ready for the new widow confronted at the wake by the other grieving widow and her stair-step kids. Undertakers and judges know that it happens all the time, and not just between religious fanatics, traveling salesmen, handsome sociopaths, and desperate women. It's a shame that there isn't a true name for a woman like my mother. My father, James, is a bigamist. That's what he is. Laverne is his wife. She found him first, and my mother has always respected the other woman's squatter's rights. But was my mother his wife too? She has legal documents and even a single Polaroid proving that she stood with James Alexander Witherspoon Jr. in front of a judge just over the state line in Alabama. However, to call her only his wife doesn't explain the full complexity of her position. When did I first discover that although I was an only child, my father was not my father and mine alone? I really can't say. It's something that I've known for as long as I've known that I had a father. I can only say for sure when I learned that this type of double duty daddy wasn't ordinary. I was about five years old in kindergarten when the art teacher, Miss Russell, asked us to draw pictures of our families. While all the other children scribbled with their crayons, I used a blue, blue ink pen and drew James, Charisse, and Laverne. In the background was Raleigh, my father's best friend, the only person we knew from his other life. I drew him with the crayon labeled flesh because he's really light-skinned. This was years and years ago, but I still remember. I hung a necklace around the wife's neck. I gave the girl a big smile stuffed with square teeth. Near the, near the left margin, I drew my mother and me standing by ourselves. With a marker, I blacked in mother's long hair and curving lashes. On my own face, I drew only a pair of wide eyes. The art teacher approached me from behind. Now, who are these people you've drawn so beautifully? Charmed, I smiled up at her. My family. My daddy has two wives and two girls. Cocking her head, she said, I see. I didn't think much more about it. I was still enjoying the memory of the way she pronounced beautifully. To this day, whenever I hear anyone say that word, I feel loved. At the end of the month, I brought all my drawings home in a cardboard folder. James opened up his wallet, which he kept plump with $2 bills to reward me for my schoolwork. I saved the portrait, my masterpiece, for last, being as it was so beautifully drawn and everything. My father picked the page up from the table and held it close to his face like he was looking for a coded message. Mother stood behind me, crossed her arms over my chest, and bent to, kiss a, bent to place a kiss at the top of my head. It's okay, she said. Did you tell your teacher who was in the picture James wanted to know? I nodded slowly, the whole time thinking I probably should lie, but I wasn't quite sure why. James, Mother said, let's not make a molehill into a mountain. She's just a child. When he said, this is important. All she did was draw a picture. Kids draw pictures. Gone in the kitchen, Gwen, James said. Let me talk to my daughter. 
My mother said, why can't I stay here? She's my daughter too. You with her all the time. You tell me I don't spend enough time talking to her, so now let me talk. My mother hesitated, then released me. She's just a little kid, James. She doesn't even know the ins and outs yet. Trust me, James said. She left the room, but I don't know that she trusted him not to say something that would leave me wounded and broken winged for life. I could see it in her face. When she was upset, she moved her jaw around invisible gum. At night, I could hear her in her room, grinding her teeth in her sleep. The sound was like gravel under car wheels. Dana, come here. James was wearing a Navy chauffeur's uniform. His hat must have been in the car, but I could see the ridge mark across his forehead where the hat band usually rested. Come closer, he said. I hesitated, looking to the space in the doorway where Mother had disappeared. Dana, he said, you're not afraid of me, are you? You're not scared of your own father, are you? His voice sounded mournful, but I took it as a dare. No, sir, I said, taking a bold step forward. Don't call me Sir Dana. I'm not your boss. When you say that, it makes me feel like an overseer. I shrugged. Mother had told me I should always call him Sir. With a sudden motion, he reached out and lifted from, reached out for me and lifted me up on his lap. He spoke to me with both our faces looking outward, so I couldn't see his expression. Dana, I can't have you making drawings like the one you made for your art class. I can't have you doing things like that. What goes on in this house between your mother and me is grown people's business. I love you, you're my baby girl, and I love you, and I love your mama, but what we do in this house has to be a secret, okay? But I didn't even draw this house. James sighed and bounced me on his lap a little bit. What happens in my world, in my life, doesn't have anything to do with you. You can't tell your teacher that your daddy has another wife. You can't tell your teacher that my name is James Witherspoon. Atlanta ain't nothing but a country town and everybody knows everybody. Your other wife and your other girl is a secret, I asked him. He put me down from his lap so we could look each other in the face. No, he said, you got it the wrong way around. Dana, you are the one that's the secret. Thank you very much.